Hello and welcome to Cleaning School's tutorial on oven restoration. This tutorial is a detailed clean and disassembly of your oven. Step 1. Before you start, make sure that you get all of your cleaning gear ready. So we've got a green scourer, a metal scrubbing brush, a stainless steel scourer, a vapour mask, safety goggles, rubber gloves, and you need a bib for this job because it's very dirty, barkeeper's friend and K2R oven cleaner. Step 2. Make sure that you remove all of your items from the oven. As you can see this is a real dirty oven and no camera tricks in this video. We have quite a bit of burnt on grease on the racks, on the oven trays, which I'm now taking out and putting on the bench, ready to be sprayed later. Also a good idea is to have aluminium foil on the base of your oven to catch all your spills. will make it much easier to clean as there won't be much black carbon stuck to the base of your oven. Step 3. Make sure all of your oven is cold, as this product only works on a cold oven. Step 4. Make sure that you put towels to protect any sensitive surfaces and on the floor. Step 5. Take your racks out ready to be sprayed. Step 6. Now you can start spraying the K2R oven cleaner all over all of the surfaces. You must make sure that the foam raises from the surface as the product is penetrating into the grease and carbon and therefore lifting it. The longer you leave this product on also, the better. The product recommends 8 hours, however, we normally leave this on for 24 hours. Now in the oven itself, you start from the roof, as you can see here, then I work my way down the back, then down the sides, base, and then finish off the other side, and finally, the door. So try to cover the sections evenly and have the foam raising off the surface once again. As you can see I'm respraying where the foam has not raised off the surface. Step 7. Now we place all the trays and racks back into the oven. I have noticed here that there is still some areas that were missed. So I'm just spraying the oven cleaner back on the parts I've missed. Next I place the trays back in, then close the oven door and leave for at least 24 hours for this product to lift all the grease and grime. Step 8 and 9. This is 24 hours after I sprayed it. As you can see, it's still wet, which means the chemical is working quite well. I'm now taking the door off. To find out how to take your door off, if you don't have your manual, most ovens have a manufacturing sticker. This oven has a manufacturing sticker on the right hand side. That is the silver part on the side of the oven. Just Google your model number and manual and you should be able to find a PDF version of your manual. Also, the manual will probably tell you how to take the base out if you have a removable base or removable sides and the rear of the oven as well and sometimes the heating element is removable on the top. Removing all items from your oven makes it much, much easier to clean and this is highly recommended. 10. Start cleaning your racks. 
So here we just show how much of the burned grease and carbon just comes straight off with this product. It really does lift and I have not seen any other oven cleaner do this. We have been doing exit cleaning for over 10 years and we have used many, many different oven cleaning products. However, if you think your product's better than this, send us a sample and we will try it. So most of the carbon and grease is being removed, but some of the hard spots are still on there. Step 11. Now we use a green scourer. Just make sure it's nice and moist. And I normally scrub backwards and forwards on this part of the rack first. As you can see, the little stuck on pieces are just coming straight off. Now you only need to give a quick wipe in this step because the next step we will go be using a more aggressive scourer. So any parts that don't come off easily, don't worry about them. Just go straight over them. As you can see there, I tried to scrub one part, but it didn't come off. Make sure that when you scrub your racks that you do the top and the bottom and that you look at all surfaces and angles. That way you will get a perfectly thorough clean. You also need to keep rinsing the scour you're using and the racks just to make sure that you are removing all of the grease and that you're not scrubbing over it again. And make sure you maintain the cleanliness of your workspace because some of those little bits and pieces might stick to the racks and then you try to scrub them off again, wasting your time. Make sure you always rinse your cloth that you're using thoroughly every single time as well. And keep them moist, not soaking wet. Now we use the stainless steel scourer on the hard burnt on black carbon. With previous oven cleaners, if there was black carbon still left on, we'd still have to scrub quite hard. But with this oven cleaner, it's all quite soft. If it's still hard, you may have missed that area when you sprayed your oven cleaner. So I would suggest going back and respraying that area and leaving the oven cleaning chemical to do the hard work. Because who wants to scrub hard all day? As you can see, I'm rinsing the rack thoroughly so I can see what is still actually stuck on the rack and moving between different angles to try to capture all of the parts that I can still scrub off. Step 13, now we use a wire brush. We only use this on the ends just to get all of the carbon that's stuck in those hard to get to little corners. I would suggest testing this on your rack first because some racks nowadays have a very soft chrome coating and the brush may damage this. So just check it on the base of the rack first. If it doesn't scratch it, then you should be fine. You can always use different angles on these brushes as well. As you can see, I'm doing the front of the rack here. Getting all those little bits out. On the back of the rack, I tried to do it the same way, but I couldn't get in. So I just used a different angle. I always do this step last and it guarantees a perfect clean. And once again, rinsing thoroughly. Thorough rinsing is very important as I can still find the little pieces that are still stuck on, as you can see. And then one last piece that I can't quite get to, so I use my brush. Now the oven rack is perfectly clean. Step 14, the oven door. 
do not use a lot of water on this part of the oven as you will get water in between the door and then you'll have to take the glass out to clean both sides of the glass if you're careful it's not necessary as you can see all of the burnt on carbon is just lifting straight off and I've actually clogged the green scour here I will flip it over to the other side shortly so that I can continue to scrub effectively So now you will take your cloth and wipe off all of the carbon and oils that are stuck on the surface just to make sure that it's perfectly clean. This oven door luckily came clean the first time. Sometimes you may need to use a steel scarer after as you saw in the last videos and they're the vents that I was talking about. 15. Now we start wiping out the oven. I always start from the base and then do the sides, then the back and then finally the roof. As you can see a lot of the burnt on grease and carbon is coming straight off. This is similar to when you clean the racks. As you want to remove the, pro the soils that are already loose on the surface and you want to minimise your scrubbing. Unfortunately, this camera angle was quite difficult to film and my head keeps getting in the way. I'm sorry for this, but I'm trying to show as much detail as we can in all of these videos. As you can see, I've wiped over at least twice to remove most of the foam. So now I'm wiping out the back. I've tried to change the angle here a little bit so my head doesn't get in the way. But as you can see, there's so much just coming straight off. This oven has four screws attaching the back plate to the back. Now I'm just trying to unscrew them. I always start from the base with the screws and then take out the top ones last. That way the base doesn't fall forward as you're trying to take it out. Now with the back out, you can access behind and around the fan. There's always quite a bit of soils on this back part normally you only need to wipe it out with a cloth as it's only spray and it's very fine and it comes straight off this fan is actually a steel fan that is galvanized and it has a little bit of rust on it some of the more expensive ovens have stainless steel fans and they come up perfectly clean this is still removing all of the carbon those brown marks that are still on the fan are actually rust marks. As you can see I'm trying to also get the blade. Now I'm scrubbing with my stainless steel scour just to quickly remove any burnt on or stuck on carbon or fats and oils on the side, base and roof of the oven. You don't need to do the back as once again it's normally just spray. Do not use too much water. Now wipe the oven out again so that you can see how much you have cleaned. As sometimes the water makes it difficult to see exactly how clean the surfaces are as there's still some soils attached. As you can see now when I'm wiping it out, the cloth is nowhere near as dirty as the first few times. And once again, sorry for my head getting in the way. But you can now see that the oven is actually shiny, which means it's getting much, much cleaner.
Next, I take the rubber seal off, as there's always some carbon and grease behind this and attached onto the rubber seal itself. I only use green scourers and cloths to clean these and do not pull them too hard. Be very careful, as if you pull it too hard, you may break it. I'm working my way around on the outside, as mostly the outside has the soils. And then next I rinse it and then get into the little groove that creates the seal. Normally you only need to wipe this part out as there's not many soils stuck in. Then shake all the water out and it's ready to go back into the oven. Now with the back on the sink, I will now scrub the rest of the back with the stainless steel scourer. Now it's a great opportunity also to clean both sides and every area thoroughly as it's much much easier to clean on the bench than it is in the oven. If this is still in the oven you cannot clean this inside part. That part just there where the vent is is normally the dirtiest of the whole back. The back is now perfectly clean as shown in the video. Now we reassemble the oven. I always start with the seal first. Make sure that you get all the corners in. And make sure that it lines up squarely around the edges. Next I put the back in. This is actually a little bit difficult because to try to hold the back up and hold a screw in the screwdriver at the same time and line up the holes can be quite difficult. Sorry once again my head is in the way here but as you can see I'm fiddling around a little bit here to try to line up the holes and get the screw in at the same time. You always put the top screws in first as it's much easier to line up the rest of the screws. Just take your time and make sure that everything lines up. If it's a little bit difficult, you may need to get someone to hold the back in for you while you screw it in. So I'm now putting the last top screw in and then I'll put the base screws in. It's much easier once again if you do the top ones first. Now it's just simply screwing in the last of the screws. Now you give the oven a final wipe out with your cloth before you install the racks and the doors as there's normally a little bit of cleaning solution still left on the surface and this makes a streaky finish. If you do this you'll get a nice polished look. Also don't forget to do the outside of the oven as once you put the door back on, that base part will be impossible to reach. I'm also cleaning the cupboards where I've made a little bit of a mess. Now you place the racks back in and they are all perfectly clean. You can see how shiny they are. And finally the door. This is always quite difficult as well to get the door to line up squarely. Each oven's different and you just have to keep making sure that it's square. As you can see it takes me a little bit of fiddling to get it to fit in the right places. Some ovens have little grooves that they slot into as well. Once again refer to your manual.
Step 17, spray the outside of the oven with a glass cleaner. We use Halo as it's an excellent streak free product. This is the final step in the oven cleaning tutorial and it makes all the difference. Thank you for watching our tutorial and if you need any further help just email us or leave comments below.